Continuing our series exploring Texas, today we're spending 24 hours in the city of Houston. Come with us as we explore many of the city's incredible attractions showcasing the best of Houston's world-class museums, barbecue scene, vibrant folk art, and even an unforgettable encounter with bats. This is just a tiny taste of what makes Houston a must-visit destination in Texas, as long as it's not in the heat of the summer. Let us know what we left off in the comments and let's jump into 24 hours exploring Houston, Texas. I'm here with my dad. We're gonna spend the next 24 hours exploring Houston, starting with the waterfall. No trip to Houston is complete without visiting Gerald D. Hines Waterfall Park. This is one of my favorite places in the city and it's definitely something you have to experience yourself. The waterfall was built in 1985 and it sits at 64 feet tall. It's been described as a horseshoe of water and I have to say that's a pretty good description. That's an awesome spot in Houston and it's also really cool at night as they light it up so you could come in the day or at night, heading on. Be sure to walk around the backside of the waterfall as well. Also note that there's no street parking around, you have to park in one of the lots. Next up we headed over to Black Hole Coffee House. The spot has great coffee and delicious pastries, plus it has cool art on the walls. Never seen a blueberry muffin with that many blueberries and it pops as jealous of his choice uh, right now. I'm jealous, that looks amazing. <laughs> After leaving coffee, we have two options for you on what you can do next. First up, on the east side of downtown Houston is Graffiti Park. Here you'll find a couple city blocks worth of buildings covered in murals. Well done, the sky's the limit. Murals are things I love finding when I go to new cities as it shows a little bit about the city's art scene. There's one more mural that you should see which is about a five minute drive away. This is the other main mural, it's in downtown Houston so you gotta drive to this one but I wanted to see it as it shows up in a lot of pictures and it's pretty cool. If Graffiti Park isn't your style, the second option is to visit some of the folk art in Houston and that's to see the Orange Show in Smither Park. This spot's located about 15 minutes outside of the city and while Smither Park is open during the week, the Orange Show is only open on the weekends. Smither Park is worth driving out to though if you love folk art as it's a beautiful spot where over 300 artists have made different pieces. Spend some time exploring and if you're there with the family, scan the QR code to get a scavenger hunt you can follow. If you want to visit the Orange Show, you have to get tickets in advance, but they were only $5 when I went. It's basically a folk art monument in Houston, and it was built by one man from 1956 to 1979. I'll have a lot more information on this spot in the full Texas road trip video if you're interested. Lastly, you can drive all the way out to Space Center Houston as well. I wouldn't recommend doing that without at least a half day though, as there's a lot to see here. I have another video on that in the description. After finishing your visit, you're probably hungry, and we have a barbecue recommendation. We're at Truth Barbecue about 30 minutes before they open, and Pops has decided he's gonna go be first in line and sit there, even though there's no one else first waiting. First in line, baby, second time. <laughs> Truth Barbecue is number three on Texas Monthly's top barbecue places in the entire state. People started showing up about 10 to 15 minutes before they open, and when they open, there's probably 30 to 40 people in line. Twice now, in these places, I've got to be number one in line. That never happens to me. So <laughs> I just want to make sure you notice that. Once it opens, you order your meat by the pound at the counter, and they cut the meat in front of you and scoop the sides. You can pick whatever you want to sit. This spot has a really great vibe for lunch in the city, and the food here was fantastic. Unfortunately, I'm an amateur and I didn't turn the microphone on when I was recording, so you can't hear anything we're saying, but both my dad and I loved what we had at Truth, and this was one of my dad's favorite barbecue places in the state of Texas. Be sure to try the smoked turkey here as well. It was definitely the best turkey we had on our barbecue road trip. If you don't know, my dad and I are on a barbecue road trip, so if you want to watch that video, check it out up here. But I will say, if you want a real Texas barbecue experience and you're just in Houston, Truth is hands down an incredible experience, great people, and great food. Only two minutes down the road is the Art Car Museum, and if you have a chance, you should definitely stop by there after lunch. 
It's pretty small with only 4-5 to five cars on display but it is free to visit. If you want to see it, go to their website in order to make an appointment. Next up we made our way over to Herman Park to explore. We're going to the Natural History Museum but first we're going to the Butterfly Garden so some butterflies can land on pops. If you're going to the Museum of Natural Science, the butterfly exhibit was only a small add-on, so we decided to do that first. Imperial scorpion, that's crazy. Look at this desert scorpion. They had an awesome bug exhibit that you could see before the butterflies. Next we made our way into the Rainforest Conservatory, which is three stories tall and had a 50 foot waterfall in the middle. This is where all the butterflies were, and I was amazed by how many butterflies they had. This is definitely one of the best butterfly gardens I've ever seen. They're so active right now, and they're everywhere. We spent a good 30 minutes in here just walking around and seeing all of the butterflies. Honestly, it felt like there were thousands of butterflies, and if you come to the museum, you should definitely do this. Yeah, check yourself in the mirror and make sure you have no butterflies on you. I, I can't believe they have a life cipher. <laughs> Those are the ones that were attacking you in Alaska? That's all I see. I mean, yeah, that guy got me in Alaska. It's interesting, they had the mosquitoes lifestyle. They're born, they find pops, and then they suck the blood life out of me. That's their lifestyle. <laughs> and die? Says. That's all they do? It says right here, and then they die and make more to find me later. <laughs> Up next, Pops and I are going to go see some dinosaurs. This is an actual fossil that was found in Wyoming. I have to say this is one of the best museum fossil collections I've ever seen on any of my travels. I'm blown away by this museum because of the amount of these that they have. Like, they're so intricate and just incredibly preserved. It's well worth seeing the museum just to see this. I mean, look at this. This is like a turtle. I was told that the ones that have the poles supporting the whole body are real fossils and the ones that have just the feet are replicas. Still, this is one of the best dinosaur museums I've ever seen. We only spent about 45 minutes in this section, but you could easily spend a few hours if you're interested. Best fossil of all time. Look at this mammoth. It knocked the guy into the air. Of course, this is just one of many exhibits they have in this massive museum, and I would say it'd take an entire day to see it all. This area was based on this painting. Everything that you see in here you can touch and interact with, and there's cabinets you can open, so pretty cool spot. The last two exhibits we saw before leaving was one on Texas wildlife and another on rare gems. In case you were wondering, while you're at the museum, you can also buy a dinosaur skull. It's only $185,000. <laughs> Pretty cool to have hanging in your house, though. That's a fantastic museum. We barely scratched the surface of all the stuff you could do here. We're going to go explore the park a little bit, but there's a lot of other museums and a zoo, so you can do a lot down here if you have the time. So that's Sam Houston right there, and Pops has been reading a history book on Texas. Who's Sam Houston? Sam Houston was the main general that led the uh, armies that fought for Texas independence and won the huge battle at San Jacinto against Santa Ana. This is the reflection pool, but there's not much reflection today. It's pretty windy. This is a really beautiful park. These tree-lined walkways and the reflection pool, definitely a nice place to explore for a couple hours, or even a full day probably in Houston. Herman Park has been here for over 100 years and it's up to 445 acres in the heart of Houston. It has memorials, monuments, a lake, a golf course, and even a train that connects you throughout the property. There's also a beautiful Japanese garden, which is the last thing that we walked through during our visit. That is a big koi fish right there. Japanese garden is nice and it's free to enter. So if you're looking for another place to explore, you can definitely do this as well. Our next stop is a piece of art that was designed by the same person who made Cloud's Gate, aka The Bean in Chicago, right there. This piece is called Cloud Column and it was made by famed artist Anish Kapoor. 
I will say it's pretty cool how it has this hollow cutout in the middle. It adds an interesting dynamic to it. That's just one of a bunch of sculptures in this area and it's free to visit, so it's definitely worth walking around. Pop says this is a broken donut. How is it a broken donut? Like a, uh, you know, like a uh, maple bar that's broken in half or something. <laughs> maple bar broken in half. After seeing the sculptures, we made our way back to where we parked and stopped at Centennial Gardens. Pops is already complaining because there's a lot of steps to walk to the top of this and he just wants to eat barbecue instead. I can do this and make it very quick. <laughs> is there brisket waiting at the top for Pops? <laughs> right near the entrance, there's a circular walkway that takes you up to the top of a large hill with a waterfall going down the side. Well, at least we're adding some steps to our daily totals. Yeah. Was it worth it? Yeah, this is nice. No brisket. This is nice up here. Important words, so. The sign said, if you think of a year, plant a seed. If you think of 10 years, plant trees. And if you think of 100 years, teach the people. It's cool that this little bubbling brook right here leads to a smaller and then bigger and bigger and bigger all the way down to the bottom. This was a fun and relaxing little walk, but it started to rain on us as we were making our way down. This is our first blue bonnets of our Texas road trip. This is the time, late March, early April, that they come out. Next up, it was time for dinner, and so we headed over to the Hobbit Cafe. What you might not know about Pops is that he's one of the biggest Tolkien fans around of the books. The books, the Lord of the Rings movies. He's a before. hater of the movies. I, the, I'm a hater of the movies. Leave mostly. all the comments below about okay. how good the movies are. Tell me are. how much you're a hater of the movies. Those no. of you who have actually read the books as many times as I've had. I think <laughs> I've read the books 15 times. Man. See how hard it is to be me? The Hobbit Cafe is a themed restaurant dedicated to the Hobbit books created by J.R.R. Tolkien. You shall not pass! <laughs> It started in 1972, and it's supposedly one of the only themed restaurants that got approval by his family. They sell a wide variety of healthy food options, plus mead. That's a veggie sandwich right there, Pops. That's the slim version. <laughs> I got curry chicken salad with sauteed jalapenos on the side. We're gonna do splitsies though, so we can try each one. Pops is going with the curry, curry chicken. Curry chicken with a sauteed jalapeno on top. Gummy. <laughs> nice. I like the curry. If you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, you gotta go there. But even if you're not, they actually have really good food. So, definitely a recommendation. We had one more thing we wanted to do right around sunset, so we had some time to kill and went to Urban South. We actually went here because our waitress at the Hobbit Cafe told us that it was a great brewery with lots of very unique beers. It has an awesome vibe and it's definitely a spot I'd come back to if I was in Houston. Plus while we're waiting, I can challenge Pop to a game of foosball. Terrible. <laughs> that's right, that's how it's done right there. Heading out for our last stop in Houston, seeing the bats. We arrived about 25 minutes before sunset. It's a little bit dreary though right now. It's a little bit of drizzle, so I don't know if the bats are gonna come out, but we'll see, maybe we'll get lucky. Most people who visit know about the bat colony in Austin, but there's actually a pretty significant bat colony in Houston as well. There's no parking right next to the bridge, so I recommend parking about five minutes drive down the road and then just walking. You can really hear the bats good in here all up in the rafters, plus you can smell them too. It smells pretty bad. Just like in Austin, these are also Mexican free-tailed bats and they usually come out right around sunset. Just waiting for what is hopefully a good bat showing. Yep, hopefully we get some bats out here tonight. I feel like that hawk up there is just kind of looking around trying to see <laughs> if a bat's gonna come out. About 10 minutes before the official sunset time, the bats started to come out. This one was especially impressive as there was a lot of bats and you're a lot closer to them than you are at the Austin Bridge. Even though I'm sure the colony is much smaller here, it felt a lot bigger because of how close you were. 
Also, in all my research, I saw basically no other videos about the bats here, so I don't know if this is a thing that people don't do, but we really liked it. How cool is that, Pops? That was really cool. Really cool. A lot of bats came out of there, man alive. Yeah, they said that that there's not as many bats here as there is in the one in Austin, and I haven't been in the one in Austin in a long time, but that was still really cool and well worth doing while you're in Houston. That's gonna do it for our Houston video. Thanks so much for spending the day with us. Let us know what your favorite spot is in Houston below, and we will see you on the next video.